I am a Family Advocacy Program Specialist. I work for Family Advocacy over at Army Community Service. Um, a little bit about my background, I am a licensed clinical social worker and I do have a certificate in school social work, okay? But so today, we're going to be talking about children and homecoming ages 6 to 12. So you're all in the right class, right? Okay. So, coming home. You guys are getting prepared for this, right? And it's adjustment. Are you guys starting to face that adjustment, see it starting to take place? And so what I want to start off with is to say that every family situation is different. No workshop here that you go to is going to tell you, you know, exactly what to expect, how it's going to be, okay? Because I had one mom say, you know, she's talked to many different counselors. One says this, one says that. And you have to look at it as that's advice. That's just giving, giving you options, okay? So every family situation is different. Okay, and so with military family, families, we look forward to being together after a long deployment. Our spouses, our moms and dads have been gone for almost a year, right? But with that comes many mixed emotions and feelings. And are you guys seeing that within yourself or with your kids? You've seen the mixed emotions and feelings probably prior to deployment, during deployment, and now looking at the reintegration. And so what kind of emotions and feelings are you guys seeing within your kids? He cries a lot? Yeah, his feelings get hurt, or he's angry, frustrated, he starts crying. Okay. And he's never done that. Okay. Are any of you else experiencing that? Seeing some maybe emotions or feelings coming, our kids are expressing that maybe we have never seen before? And we're going to talk about all of that. And with this adjustment, we have to remember that every family member has different expectations. From our little ones, you know, to us, to our soldier downrange, everybody has different expectations. And so the key and why you all are here at this workshop is because we can start being prepared, you know, start thinking about what is this uh, reintegration going to look like? What is it going to look like for the soldier to come home? And that's why I assume you guys are all here today. So on your paper that I handed out, on one side it asks, how has your family changed? Because think about it, when our soldiers deployed, it was, what, September, October? School was just starting. They're going to come back, what, July, August? <laughs> School is over. We're starting a new year. Okay, so a lot has changed in a year. Family roles. What are some of the roles that have changed within the family? I mean, you all are single parents right now, right? So I just want you to start thinking about, you know, how has your family changed throughout this deployment? So some things are family roles. Children, how have they grown and developed? Have you developed new friends and relationships? During a deployment, a lot of times we reach out and get a support system, right? So you may have the support system and, you know, people that the soldier doesn't even know. Disciplinary roles. Right now, you guys are pri primarily the disciplinaries, right? Or are we calling up um, dads downrange and they're still disciplining? Or are we doing it? And then schedules and routines. Is the schedules and routines, are they the same as they were when dad was home? Or have they changed? What does your schedule and routine look like? So I just want you to really start thinking about how has your family changed? Again, this is children and homecoming ages 6 to 12. So we have to understand our kids and where they're at. And it says some children may need a period of time to warm up and to readjust to the soldier. Okay, and did you all know that the readjustment period lasts six to eight weeks, if not longer? So going to expectations, you know, every, like I said, every family member has expectations. We, as now that I told you this, you know, we can expect that. That we're not, you know, dad's not going to get off the plane and everything just goes back to how it was. Readjustment, six to eight weeks, if not longer. Okay, we need to allow our kids time and the space. 
It says children are generally excited about a reunion with their returning parents. Are your kids excited? Do they know dad's coming home soon? They know dad is coming home. But with excitement, what emotions come? Impatience. Impatience. And then uh, excite with excitement um, can lead to stress. Because stress is not always negative, right? You can have positive stress. But so this is a very stressful time for you know, us as adults and for our kids. And there's, again, going to be mixed feelings. You know, there's a lot of anxiousness, uncertainty, nervousness, concern. And it's the same thing as for adults. And actually on the table, Colleen had put some of her stress, like coping. There's like cards for stress. But you know, just breathing, teaching him like different breathing techniques or music is always good, right? Just like listening to music and calming down. And you know, it's so easy now. You have Pandora, you know, all that stuff that you can listen to. But, um, and I really encourage for this age group is exercise exercise, get them outside, breathe that fresh air, okay? But it's just the same things that we do as adults to you know, de-stress, same things that we wanna start teaching our kids. But I agree with you because he can start manipulating you, right? Yeah. Mom, I'm so stressed out, I need to play my video game, right? And it's just because he wants to play his video game. And so what we could do too is to put a time limit for him, right? Okay, and then continuing on, it says children's responses are influenced by many factors, and some are their age, their maturity level, gender, the parent-child relationship, and that's the parent-child relationship, the relationship that they have with you or the caregiver that's at home, and then also the parent-child relationship with the soldier downrange. And then here it says coping skills of the caregiver during separation. So how did you all cope? Because we're role models. So if the kids see that, you know, this whole deployment's been real stressful on us, we, our anxiety's been real high, um, you know, we have no patience, they're, they're taking that from us, they're learning from us. So again, if we have good coping skills during the deployment, it's gonna help our kids in their response, okay? So what are some responses that you, either have seen, because somebody, some of you are on multiple deployments, right? This is not your first deployment. What are some things that you have seen, or what do you anticipate your kids? How do you anticipate them to respond to the soldier's homecoming? Have you thought about that? We're gonna have some kids that, you know, they're gonna be going around telling everyone, my dad's coming home, he's a hero, right? When dad gets off the plane, they wanna tell their whole nine months to dad in like five minutes, you know, it's just talk nonstop. You're gonna have some kids that are very angry, that they're angry that you left me. Why did you leave me? They feel the abandonment. Some are gonna to wanna to keep their distance from the returning parent. Some are not ready to allow that soldier into their life yet. But then, so it's a spectrum. So then on the way opposite side, you might have clingers. Ones that, you know, they're, you know, when uh, dad gets off the plane, they're right there. When, wherever dad goes, where are you going? Can I come with? What are you doing? Right? So we have to anticipate all that. And we all know our kids, so we all have to start thinking now, how are our kids, how do we think they're going to respond, and start communicating that downrange. If you've seen that your child is you know, has some resentment about this deployment, you know, communicate that with the soldier because you don't want the soldier to come home and take on all that guilt, okay? And then here, children will likely test limits and boundaries during this time. Especially, Elizabeth, you have said that, but especially with the soldier, right? Because, and a lot of soldiers will parent out of guilt oh, I'll give you whatever you want because I've been gone, you know, I feel so bad I've been gone, I missed out on your life, and, and 
There's no limits, no boundaries. So we want to be very careful with that. But know in our mind that this is the time kids know. Because no matter how good our kids are, they're human. They're going to manipulate the situation. So the key to a successful transition includes four things. Our consistency, patience, communications, and having realistic expectations. So looking at consistency, keeping our discipline, routine, schedules, and rules as consistent as possible. And what I mean by that, what, what you all are doing right now, if it's working, keep it going. Okay, keep the schedules, keep the rules, keep the discipline. And then slowly during that reintegration, you know, you can talk and start implementing different things. It says establish limits and boundaries. You all have limits, clear limits with our kids. Your kids know what you tolerate and what you do not, what you accept and what you do not accept. Do they know that? She says, absolutely. It's very important that we let our kids know what our limits are. And so in the parenting class I always teach, I say, once you have your limits, it's like volleyball posts. You want to put those in cement, right? And within the limits and boundaries, we have to allow choices. Because with choices, we're giving our kids freedom. Freedom to make a choice. And with that, they're going to build responsibility. They're going to take ownership. Okay, and we're allowing them to grow and then follow through with consequences. Consequences are both positive and negative, right? Every choice we make has a consequence, okay? And as parents, we have to follow through with consequences. And a lot of times our kids will test us. They test to see, is mom or dad going to follow through with the consequence? Okay, and here it says consistency will help families to better be prepared to handle problem behaviors. No family is perfect, and that's why it doesn't say consistency will help, you know, eliminate problem behaviors, because we're going to have them. Okay, but if we are consistent, if we let our kids know what the limits are, and we always follow through with consequences, this is going to help us handle problem behaviors. And have patience. I know I sat in on the early childhood, and a lot of moms said, since this deployment, my patience has gone out. So what is the take here? How's your guys' patience? With yourself and with your kids? What did you say? Thin? OK. So and I, I'm glad you brought that up, because self-care is very important, right? We have to take care of ourselves before we take care of our family, okay? So Sunny said, you know, she, you know, when she takes time out for herself, she knows that her patience is where it needs to be. And as parents, we always want to try staying calm, cool, and connected, okay? And here it says, all family members need time to adjust to the changes that accompany the return of the soldier. So going back to patience, you know, just because I can readjust, you know, say within a month, doesn't mean my 12-year-old, you know, daughter is going to, you know, fall right into that place. And with patience, expect some, some um, temporary slowdowns or disruptions. Okay, we don't really homework. Probably not going to be much of that unless they're going, you know, to school year-round. But chores, you know, there may be some slowdowns. Now, does that take away, you know, that is that does it make it an excuse for not doing their chore? No, right? But we can have some understanding, right? We can, we can understand and provide some extra help, OK? But it doesn't mean because, again, if, if we're, uh, we don't want to allow our kids to manipulate these situations, OK? But we can expect you know, that we're going to have some setbacks. It's OK. We can breathe. We'll get through this, right? And here, patience and understanding will go a long way to help the family successfully reunite with a minimum of problems. So again, you hear, this is not to eliminate problems. We're going to be faced with problems. And communication. I'm pretty sure every workshop you've gone to, they've hit on communication. Because communication is so important. 
It's the foundation of all relationships. You agree? So some tips. Take personal time with each child. Are we spending one-on-one -on -one time with each of our kids? And it could just be five minutes. Five minutes of just touching base with that child. Because sometimes, you know, do I really want to tell my mom something with my brother or sister right here? So sometimes we just need to find that time, even if it is only a couple minutes a day. But take that personal time with each kid. And that's going to be important, too, to talk to our spouses downrange about that's a good idea for them when they get back to spend you know, one on one time with each of the kids so that they can rebuild their relationship. Here it says start with a clean slate. Past wrongs don't count, okay? I hope none of you all said wait till your father comes home, you know, back in say October, November, okay? That's, that's so long ago, okay? So, and you don't wanna, you know, when we're doing this uh, homecoming and sitting down. Oh, did you tell your father what you did uh, during spring break? But also what's important is to praise our children for what he or she, what they have accomplished during the deployment. Because have they accomplished a lot? We all have, right? We all deserve a pat on the back that we, you know, we made it through this. And our kids have grown. It says encourage and acknowledge the child's feelings and allow the child to talk about feelings, okay? Because again, like I said, during this time, there's a lot of mixed emotions and feelings and we want to encourage our kids to express them. Give them the opportunity to talk. We never want to criticize our kids because what is that going to do? Make them feel worthless and they're going to shut down, okay? And it says, take time to listen. Clarify what you've heard before you respond. Because believe it or not, majority of people do not know how to effectively listen. You know, we say we're listening, but we're doing something else. Or we're thinking about something else, right? And so really take time to listen to our kids. You know, focus on them and only them. And communication is key. Throughout this whole reintegration, and if I can't stress enough, it's communication. Communication with your spouse downrange and communication with your kids. And then keeping realistic expectations. Here it says the expectation that the family will be just as it was before the deployment must be addressed. Okay? Because are any of your all's families going to look the same what it was prior to deployment? Every person has changed. Every day we change, right? So we have to throw that expectation out because that is not a realistic expectation. It says six to eight weeks prior to homecoming, we tend to start having these mixed feelings. And that's about now, right? We're about six to eight weeks, maybe a little bit further out. So again, some of the feelings, apprehension, worry, excitement, anticipation. Okay, expect, expect that we're gonna have these feelings. Think positively. If we just know like, oh my gosh, we just dread this, you know, redeployment. Oh, you know, Johnny is, oh, he's gonna be horrible. He's gonna act up. I mean, what are you doing? You're setting the stage, right? And guess what? Johnny knows that. Johnny knows this is what my mom expects of me and kids will live up to expectations. Okay, use this time to plan how to prevent problems and how to handle them when they do arise. So start thinking, we know our kids, we know their personality, you know, we don't know exactly how they're going to react or how they're going to respond, but we can start thinking and prevention, right? We can start preparing. Here, recognize your own feelings and why and how to manage these emotions positively. Are you all taking time out to really think about what does this deployment, what, what has it taken on you? You know, has it taken a toll on you? What feelings do you have with the coming home? You know that in a couple months, you're gonna be greeting that soldier off the plane and you gotta figure out how life is gonna be. How, how's this family gonna operate? 
So I know there's probably a lot of feelings, but we have to be aware of them, and then how are we gonna manage the emotions? Because who's in control of how you feel? You are, right? So we can control how we feel and how we react to a situation. Okay, realistic expectation. It says, although the initial reunion may be perfect, things will not stay this way. And I guarantee no one's life will stay perfect. You know, some people, the honeymoon phase may be two weeks. Some people, it may be 10 minutes, right? Because the honeymoon phase is, it ends whenever we have a conflict or whenever there's a disagreement or an argument or a problem arises. Okay, but just know that this, the reunion, you know, the perfect family, it's not going to last. Okay, readjustment takes time. Like I said, six to eight weeks, if not longer, Elizabeth says she's talked to her husband and they're thinking that we could probably do this in a month, month and a half. Keep in touch with reality. It says reality rarely has a chance to keep, to live up to high expectations that we set in our mind. Because have you really thought about your expectations? Because when we start really thinking of our expectations, we are setting the bar so high. We're setting ourselves up for failure. And here it says everyone must be prepared for change. Okay? And we have to prepare our kids for this change. So all of our kids know that dads are coming home, right? Because I know for R&R, &R, sometimes we like to surprise our kids. You know, you see it on the news where dad comes to the school. This is not the time to surprise them. Now, of course, we're not going to tell them dad's coming home on Saturday, because Saturday may come and go and dad's not home. But we can let them know a time frame. So start now. What I want you guys to do is start thinking and talking about your expectations uh, and role changes before the soldier returns. So on the other side of the paper that I gave to you, this is where you can jot that all down, okay? It says, keep children connected during redeployment. Again, I want to make sure all of our kids are connected, that they're a part of this, that we're not keeping anything away from them. Okay, it says shaping resilience in children during homecoming is to pre-plan ways to adjust the soldiers' return back into the family. Okay, they're just as much a part of this pre-planning. Communicate honestly about expectations long before the arrival of the soldier. We have expectations for our marriage. We have expectations as parents for ourselves, right, how we parent our kids. And we have expectations for our kids. Now, do our kids know our, what we expect of them? Is it clearly laid out to them? Okay, and it says here, make an agreement on the schedule for the first few days or weeks upon the return. Have you all thought about that, what the schedule is gonna look like? But now, now maybe a little early, but as it gets closer, think of that. You know, when the soldier gets off the plane, are we gonna say, here you go, I need a vacation. Right? Because a lot of times it's still kind of up in the air. We don't know our soldier schedule when they get back. So I know when I've talked to a lot of people who have gone through reintegration, they've continued on with their schedule and then, you know, had the soldier continue on, but they didn't have that expectation that, you know, dad is going to take Johnny to baseball practice. Because then what if dad has to be at work? What if the equipment's come in? Right, and he has to work late, and then, you know, we're, we're disappointed. Be flexible, be, prepare, be prepared for change, be patient with the readjustment process. I mean, you guys know.